What up, homeboys? We are live with the Everlook, an official podcast, the one podcast that I was very scared that I would be too lazy to keep doing, but time forces me to do things. We got cargos here, excellent veteran in the World of Warcraft content creator space, uh, one of the most notorious guide makers of Classic WoW, actually. We got Vincent, as always, and Gian is in church praying so he can be forgiven for not coming here. So. How are you doing, Cargos? How are you doing, man? Doing really good, man. I'm doing really good. Thank you very much for the <laughs> opportunity to be here on your show. I, uh, I've been watching you guys from the sidelines, kind of low key for a while, watching the Everlook project develop, and uh, you know, didn't think I'd be interested in private servers again uh, with Classic yes. and and all that. But you know, here we are, and uh, servers looking really good in, in large part due to your your guys' efforts. And I uh, stop it. Uh, yeah, no, it's, I'm really happy. There's a lot of stuff, man. I've been wanting to put out a lot of information. But I kind of just CBA to do it in my own channel. It's kind of a mixture of like being lazy mixed with just having a lot of work obligations as well um, and stuff. So just a lot of stuff on my chest a bit. And this is just like such an awesome opportunity to like connect with some of the people in the community and get some of that stuff out there and uh, just talk with you guys, connect with you guys. So thanks for, uh, thanks for the invite. Thanks for you for coming. And how are you doing, Vincent, my boy, my reoccurrent co-host in this endeavor that we got? I'm okay. <laughs> That's not uh, track to post production. Medina here, part of the stream got corrupted. We were just talking about the world first Ragnaros that happened that very day. Yeah, did you guys watch it live or did you just watch the recap? No, I didn't even know it was live. I wish somebody would have told me actually. Like, I didn't know about it. I feel bad. I yeah. would have, I would have like linked them or something. Like, it was it streaming live when that happened. It was sick. Yeah, this dude, yeah. Uh, King Richard, was uh, was streaming it. And there was a ton of people watching, man. It reminded me of the early private server days where people were interested in that stuff, watching apes and some of those guilds, 400 people watching. You know, he's kind of a smaller streamer. Yeah. Usually, probably doesn't get too many views and had well over 400 watching him clear That's down the insane. MC in 2022. And and honestly, very wholesome guy, very wholesome guild. You know, they're not really like turbo giga sweaty or whatever. They were still kind of like, you know, fumbling over a lot of the fights and stuff, which is totally fine. Um, and it was kind of refreshing to see, man. They just weren't like these you know, turbo neat types that everything figured out with a whole bunch of ego and stuff. They were pretty chill. Chat was pretty chill. Um, it was good vibes all around. I think uh, it, it was really nice, man. Uh, shout out to King Richard and the boys do. Yeah, we should. I'm gonna link him in the comments or something. You should check him out. I am so sad that I missed the mixed dead, missed dead. Oh my God. Like one of the, my favorite memories of Classic WoW was at the very start. You, you remember that event that Method did rest in peace? We in California, like every big streamer was in the Method headquarters or something and you were like, when the game came out, you were like watching, oh, what is Cargos doing right now? Okay, he's at that level. Let's see where he, is Asmongol catching up? Oh, let's see his tips out ahead of everybody. Like, you know, like just seeing people in the race was one of my favorite times during Classic. Yeah, hundred percent. It's such a long haul too that it, uh, it, 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 it's like the best for a race type of thing. Like they're doing it for a TBC and Wrath and retail and stuff, but nothing quite hits like the vanilla race because there's no way to do it in one session. You're dealing with a marathon, not a sprint. And uh, I, I'm really important on this realm, and I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about this, about a lot of this stuff later. Just curious how you guys are enjoying the game world right now, but it feels very brutal and difficult and and, and in all the best ways. Uh, I've been have you tried to kill Arugal? Oh yeah, he's bugged the shit, but Vol was uh, <laughs> manually rescripting him the other day because he was getting you feel safer uh, when you're in at least at least with one other person, you know. And, and it's really the way that everything is set up right now is it really encourages you to party up in group of people and be social in the MMO, and like you get that kind of faction camaraderie and pride, and you build up that sort of seething hatred towards the other faction, even though we probably played both factions a zillion times over. It just you know it never fails to impart that in you yeah i've seen that a lot like people are in general chat guys there's this level 17 hunter in nashville let's go get him and like 10 people get up in a raid and just go kill him <laughs> i still can't believe they put that shrine in the fucking game i though. am so so <laughs> oh, cool, so yeah. happy about it because we've yeah. been telling war for discord and we never thought he was gonna do it we thought like you know well like when he said that sounds like a good idea we thought like this guy's capping there's no way there is no way they are gonna put an essential monument in the server and lo and behold yeah there it is Crazy, rest man. in key rest in peace Kesik. you will never be forgotten i'm sure we'll, we'll talk about this a bit more too but watching that uh mc yesterday 
I, a lot of us, it's been a long time since we played a progressive itemization server, and a lot of us don't even remember what it's like, and didn't just didn't, didn't really understand all that goes into a progressive itemization server. And I'll tell you what, watching them do MC yesterday, it was pretty shocking how little loot, like what loot changes there are in this patch. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but like half the loot is missing in MC. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, and loot. it's all the good shit. It's all the good shit is <laughs> yeah, gone. Yeah, like bro. especially there's tank no... gear, right? Like there's a lot of tank gear that isn't available right now. And that really sucks. Like I remember, I don't remember the names. So there, there was these like off piece bracers that were like best in slot until BWR and they are not here. And I think there's also boots that are missing. Like, I don't know the full list. It's uh, th th This guy sent me a sheet today um, where you can see all the changes and items. It's like a Google sheet. I'll link it to you guys in a bit where you can you can check to see what's in in 1.2 1 versus 1.4, or et cetera, et cetera. But just off the top of the head, no Onslaught Girdle for Warriors, no Predations Blade, no Obsidian Edge Blade. Oh my god. No zero loot off major domo so you kill major domo yeah. executives the right hand of ragnaros and you're expecting um you know some sicko loot low rockalar or <laughs> benediction or anathema and there's zero loot there is no recipes so there's no elemental sharpening stone recipes no lion heart that you can get um no no accurate scope or whatever it's called for the hunters that's my understanding no recipes so M mc is just this there's not a lot of incentive to go do it right now. Like, when, still... when they are gonna add onslaught girdle because that thing is best in slot like forever. No, what is it? Uh, onslaught girdle is best in slot for melee like forever, right? Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's it, it definitely can be. It's a super strong. Uh, it's one of the I, best it's, items it's in the game. I didn't know that wasn't available. Mm -hmm. And like you know, BRE is nerfed. A spinal reaper dropped off rag yesterday. And that weapon is so powerful right now because there's nothing in the game. Yeah, so I was gonna say do, that uh, it's gonna be Arcanite Reaper land for a few patches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, the other thing with 1.2 is there's no Thorium Brotherhood that doesn't exist. That whole that whole questing hub in Hinterlands, the Revan Tusk Village off the eastern coast of Hinterlands isn't there. 1.2. I'm trying to be a bloomer about it. I'm trying to get excited about it. And the best I can do is go, okay, all these crappy items, not crappy, but, you know, these items from Strat and Skolo and some of the stuff like Devil Sword and, and, and Blue Gear, like, that stuff's going to have its time in the sun, and there's not much gear, and you're really going to be able to savor and uh, appreciate each piece of gear that you do get. That's the bloomer take, but the other perspective is that 1.2 is kind of a pega. It's like, it's missing, like, half the content, like, you're missing yeah, a like, bunch of quest I can, hubs. I totally... Understand the argument for progressive itemization. The game was too easy. You have too much gear available. Having gear available makes some classes way too strong. This and that. I get it. But at the same time, like I don't think anybody went up and said, "I really wish, I really wish that Silitos didn't have any content in it. I really wish yeah. I couldn't question it." I never heard somebody say that. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So you're just these these quest hubs are going to come out later in the server, and it's, people aren't really going to care. Uh, that much right like some questing hub comes out you're already level 60 for three months like who cares um the main thing i think progressive itemization fixes in a way is it nerfs the rank gear for a while so people still have the ranking in so you can still rank and get honor and and, and do all that which is really fun but you don't break the game because the rank gear is so powerful that it kind of like in many ways invalidates a lot of the other gear you just skip past all this other gear you race up to 10 or 11 or 12 or 14 um and, and you just don't you just skip all this other gear so by doing progressive itemization the rank system is in but it's a lot weaker um so so it makes a lot of these other pieces yeah you can still you get know, progression but you you do not benefit that much from it yeah and classic was considering putting it because the gear is so powerful the rank gear they're considering putting in the rank system during bwl but people were like there's no way that's way too long no honor system till bwl they're like imagine there's no ranking all the way to bwl people would be that is that would be on that would be unacceptable to some people. But at the same time, you don't want the 14 weapons in too soon. Because then, once you get 14 gear, you're done. You can just clear it. You can beat the entire video game. You don't have to get a single other piece. You're entirely kitted out. You have everything you need to go kill kill the Zod. You know, as a warrior, for example. So That's the failure that yeah. it had with the design of the PvP system. Because they made getting rank 14 so stupidly difficult and time-consuming that... They had to put like some insane reward to make it worth their time, and like I, they put themselves in a in a hole. 
You know, like, there's no good answer to this now. I know, I'm happy that the rank 14 gear isn't in, because what you said, like, you got, like, almost AQ40 level gear, kinda, like, the item level power that it has. And, like, day one. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's a it's really powerful. So that's the main thing I think progressive itemization fixes. It makes it so that you can have the ranking system in, and a lot of people are enjoying world PvP this time around and enjoying you know enjoying that aspect of vanilla, like just the griefing and the memes and the emergent gameplay that comes from fighting out in the open world. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't invalidate all the gear. Yeah, it would almost be like in my mind like selective progressive itemization like maybe you wouldn't do progressive itemization other than the pvp gear like maybe you just actually ro roll with final form value on gear and stuff like that but just the pvp gear <laughs> becomes better stronger later uh, which is a bit awkward but at the same time it it uh addresses a lot of the concerns yeah, like mm -hmm. the concept of the franken patch i think would be more alive than ever now, now like there is no one patch that the modern classic or private servers adhere to when they say we're on 1.2 content that's really not true like we got the pp system when that was like is uh i think it should be con uh, built that way they should build the servers like with the best reasonable features that should be included do i believe that we do we shouldn't have marauder on day one do i think the game is going to be better because of that no i think it's pretty fucking dumb if you, like they they should just put some content in it, like content that doesn't make the game trivialize. You can make an argument yeah, well, for Dire Mall, I guess. There's two pieces to this, right? So there's progressive, progressive itemization, that refers to the items, specifically the items and how they get buffed and nerfed over time throughout the patches. And then the other thing is like the phasing, right? Of like when you introduce Dire Mall, BWL, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I really like the phasing right now. I think the phasing is awesome. I love that we just have Maradon and there's no Dire Maul right now. I enjoy it. It's, it's funny because maybe I'm too much of a bloomer. I enjoyed this, the, the way Som did it as well with Dire Maul and 0.5, like Dungeon Set 2 quests there from the start as well. That, that, that made it an interesting meta. But it's refreshing to me that with no Dire Maul in the game and just the way things are right now, like far, farming Maradon and just vendoring that blue gear is one of the best gold farming methods again. Like all of the kind of shitty b minus tier gold farms are now s tier in this meta uh because dire mall is not available hunters can't do tribute runs there's not uh all the jump runs there's all that stuff's not in right so it makes you know sm gold farming and and weird stuff like that it makes it viable um and it feels like you know the economy is uh it's like everything's yeah, cheaper right now i really wish and white kidney and wall have talked about this so let's hope they like deliver on this they say they are going to look very close into dire mall and they are going to try to destroy every single gold farming method that exists in it and that makes me very happy because like that is like the number one money printing thing that we have like the number one inflation causer in the game right now like when it comes out i don't know that's a bit shocking to me i don't know how i feel about that i actually think that's kind of terrible I know, maybe uh, like jump runs should be okay because it's like 50 gold a run or something with split between two, three people is not that much. But like the lasher fans, you remember that stuff? Like the whole mage stuff that you can do. Even I've seen priests do that stuff somehow. But like I don't want to see any of that, any of the safe spotting, any of the uh, guiding that you can do. I, I really hope they crack down on that. Because it's like it, it takes zero skill. That, that's why there there's so many bots. There used to be so many bots. Like yeah, I can see it with the lasher farm with the lasher farms in particular. I could see that for sure because you could just jump down there and spam holy over or whatever and get some gold that way. Tribute runs. There are many hunters. I want to say the majority of hunters. I do not mind tribute. Can't they can't even do tribute runs? It's too. They're they're literally hard stuck. It, it takes a lot of effort. It's like a skill set you develop and then you do get you know insane reward for once you can figure it yeah. out. But to me, it's like. Dire Maul being a part of the economy and all those runs is a is a big part of the... No, but here's the know, difference, to... right? Like, when you do a tribute run, run mo most of the money that you make is not vendor trash. It is money that stuff that you... the potions, the whatever you drop, you know, the stuff that you sell. That's most of the money that you make. When you do the lesser farm, you are literally printing gold into the economy that didn't exist before. And that's what ruins the economy. Yeah, I mean... 
Lasher Farm's kind of small potatoes though compared to Trib. But you're, you're right though. If you want to sell the rings, like Tarn Shelvin rings, and um, sell like you know World Buff Lockouts and whatever people need, that can be your biggest gold maker. But even just vendoring the blues is pretty nuts. I mean, you get like four blues, and on average, they probably sell for like the median price would be like you know four point five gold each. If you get like a barber's blade, and a, or maybe like four gold each, you yeah. vendor them all, and you get the potions and food and all types of stuff. But um. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. They're they're doing some interesting stuff with the server that apparently has never been done before in private servers, like walls going back and implementing like negative resist, which was there at the early vanilla. Yeah, I was. I don't like, even know what it really. Means. I think warlocks are not broken enough in PvP. We need warlocks to be more broken, boys. Get to work. Yeah, and hunters with loopholes. Yeah. Original shadow damage. I sure do love getting one shot by a pet, boys. Let's get to work. If they don't put lupus in the game, I do not play. Do you remember the Lights Hope subreddit back when it was up? Like, the first three months that Northdale and, and Lightbringer came up, the, the, po the subreddit was nothing but people complaining about lupus. It was lupus subreddit. It's insane. Yeah, Lupos is pretty strong right now. I can open on a hunter right now and, uh, you know, cheap shot kidney him, grenade, like just put a big, a whole bunch of CC into him. And I can probably kill him a lot of the time, but just his pet damage, I'm at like 10% health while he's just completely yeah. CC'd the entire time. And the pet is just ma ma like mashing my face. There is zero counterplay. There is no counterplay at all. It is so awful. Yeah. So when people when the hunters get to sixty, they're gonna respec out of BM. They're just doing that for leveling right now. And then once the pet the pet isn't like bestial wrath, you can interact with it at least. And uh, you know those pets aren't scaling any more than they are right now. There's no like pet scaling in vanilla, so that, that they will fall off a bit. There'll be people they'll be playing like marks in PvP, and you can actually like you know blind the pet or shoot the pet or do something. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do the hunter. I better get my shadow resistance gear, boys. Oh my god, they say they are gonna nerf him, like when it comes out, what was it, BWL, they nerf Lupus to the ground? Are they really? Interesting. Like, because Lupus wasn't that way during the whole span of vanilla, it got nerfed, that's why it wasn't in Classic either. But I don't remember hmm. the exact patch that he got nerfed. Yeah, I don't mind them keeping it in as is, as it currently stands. I mean, Hunters um, could use a little bit of love in terms of like being able to pump a little harder. I mean, There's only eight PvP, debuff slots sure. on here. Yeah. But like in PvP it's a huge issue. Because like magic damage yeah. is a lot stronger than melee damage in PvP, like for almost any class. And giving them like a huge bump of magic damage to something that shouldn't even have the damage that it has. Like, can you imagine being the poor guy that has to take the flag in W in Wars on Gulch? It's like Vietnam <laughs> in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But like hunters in a one v one situation, they're uh, like if they open at forty yards range, they can have a lot of a better chance. But you know, like hunter versus shadow priest is miserable. Like just two shadow pains and you're dead. You know, hunter versus warrior, they can do pretty good versus warrior, I guess. But warriors are just like kitted out and get right on top of them. You can just like two shot the hunter sometimes. Like I don't know, hunters do okay versus warriors actually. Versus rogues, I feel like if war rogues have everything versus a hunter, uh. Rogues can do all right if they're dwarf. It makes it a little bit harder. Like hunters don't have a lot of like fantastic one v one matchups if they're like, um, not opening like forty yards away and all that. Like you can deal with them. Yeah, especially druids. You know, they like druids struggle with hunters a lot in in forested areas. Depends on the hunter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like you know, they say you need at least nine level advantage to beat one. That that's what I hear. So. <laughs> Yeah. But how are you guys enjoying the server though so far? I mean, I see you've been playing a lot more San Medina, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I finally got some free some time. Levels. Been pumping. Got Let's like go four over, levels bro. in yesterday. My eyes melt. I gotta go farm RFK now and get the course maker. Oh my god. Uh, you, know, you know what I miss of playing a warrior, man? You know what I miss of playing a warrior? Like, the weapon progression mattering so much. You know what I mean? Like... Getting hyped for the Willwind Axe, getting hyped for the Ravager. Now it's like, oh, I do a little more damage. It's not the same, dude. Yeah, I totally feel you on that. 
Rogue, Rogue has that as well. Weapon, weapon, weapon progression is just so fun. It just keeps your head in the game. Makes you plan ahead. That's what I like, you know? Like, makes you plan how you're gonna level. Makes dungeons yeah, worth it. There's nothing like getting a fresh weapon in vanilla. And some classes, the impact that it has, you know? Like, that's another thing that casters are not so fun to level for me, is that you don't feel it. You do not feel it when you get more gear. Like... Yeah, you don't really need the gear that much as a caster. You can just level 60 naked as a mage and you're fine. I remember or when I got one. my Willwind Axe, like, I, I tried to hit a mob and I did twice the damage that I did before getting it, the same level, the same character. Like, you cannot buy that. <laughs> So Vincent, uh, you're playing Alliance. How's the Alliance going? You know, like... <laughs> a lot of deaths. <laughs> for, uh, for, uh, one Sorry. Night, uh... <laughs> yeah, all good. Nah, um... Yeah, it feels pretty good. Um, pretty much each zone is um, filled to the brim with people. Um, depending where you are, for example, Hillsbred foothills, um just both factions running around killing each other trying to push each other out of the quest areas it's super alive so uh, on certain uh, spots it's a bit um, hard to quest for example um, I think you know, guys know in Duskwood the uh, ghoul area the, uh, on the graveyard um, where stitches uh, spawn oh that's where Gatemaster plays yeah you know the Gatemaster <laughs> He not was really. the number one PvP -er first week of the server. He did nothing but go there and gank people in that graveyard. But, yeah. <laughs> Great. Is that what you mean? No, um, what I mean is specifically, there are so many Alliance people just uh, try to grind. And uh, if you want to do quests, they don't even uh, take the invite. So it's a bit hard to get stuff done in certain areas. Yeah. That's a bit unfortunate, but... Uh, yeah, the, the language that. barrier, you know, the Ruskies, uh, they, they don't like teaming up. I don't know why, but like, um, Russian players, they like playing solo. They don't like, like, grouping up. I don't know if, this is, if it is because no. they don't understand what you say, or like, they just do not like grouping up. Because I guess it is faster if you solo, but like, sometimes you gotta group up, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it you... feels really good to be in a group right now. I'm telling you, man, if I had to do it all over again, I just would have made sure um, I, I would have made sure like when I got to the contested areas, like some of the crazy spots in Stranglethorn or whatever, I would have, uh, you know, tried to go with a, a larger squad, you know, three, four people to do all the quests and stuff. It feels really good to be grouped up and it is surprising. I, I feel the same way, not not towards Russian people or anything like that, but when same. I ask in Guild, <laughs> but when I ask in Guild, like, if anyone wants to go do a dungeon or, or do some quests or whatever, it, it, um, you kind of get crickets a lot of the time. People are. Oh I, my I guess god, we got Dion Boy! Finally! Hello! Hey, what's up? Oh, sorry about that, guys. What's up, brother? How are you doing? No, you don't, you don't have to be sorry. The, lo the Lord is more important than, than us. Uh, well, that's debatable. So, how's it been going, gentlemen? Oh, we were just talking about how the server came out and how we were feeling about the population and our interactions. And I was talking about, we were talking about like how grouping up seems to be the meta right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, what? Let me stop you from continuing to talking. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, actually, I have to go get a just sip of water. I will be right back, guys. Sorry about that again. Sip of coffee? Oh, good. A sip of coffee. <laughs> Not very bright. He has a broken leg, it's gonna take him a minute. So, like, yeah, I do feel that, like, for example, Shimmering Flats, there is no way you can solo that right now. There is no hacking way you can do that thing if you're solo. Even if you get, like, five well, levels over. You need to be crafty about it, because I did it. <laughs> it's a nightmare, <laughs> though, as I lied. It's a nightmare. You poor guys I get so bullied. <laughs> I had so many hunters opening up on me and then they died because they thought they could take me, but... Mm -mm. Yeah, Shimmering Flats is an absolute war zone. Is, are the, are the lower levels are the lower level zones still packed right now? Like, how, how is Hills it right Brad now? Is like, full uh, of people. Uh, yeah. Silver Pine is full of people. That's about all I've seen because I was doing SFK. Uh, the other ones, I got no idea. Ashenvale as well. A lot of uh, PvP going on still. 
Yeah, um, a lot of hunter the, and druid via um, violence. The um, first leveling zones like uh, Mulgo and stuff like this, there is uh, not much uh, more going on, but... Uh, yeah, Durotar is empty. That's true. Yeah. Around level 20, there are still a lot of people running around. Makes sense, you know, like everybody already hit their max level. Because I leveled the mage to level 5 just to park him to get some rest of the XP, you know, I'm gonna slowly level him and stuff. And he's like nothing. I, I, all the time that it took me like 4 hours to get level 5, I got level 5 in 10 minutes. It was yeah. awesome. I mean, yeah, that, that's cool to hear that the zones are still packed because, like, I'm in Angoro right now and it is an absolute war zone as well. I can All only these imagine, feel, though, uh, like, there, there's, there's, the, the, there's the ranker high. types. Yeah, the ranker types who are like 60 and sweating, they're out here picking off the low 50s now, which is a great strategy uh, to do. So they're just sitting here 16 hours a day at the flight path yeah. at uh, Marshall's Refuge and it is it is a meat grinder. That you touch down on the flight path, dead. Yeah. That is brilliant Jesus. because they also get to make money off the devil source. Yeah, that's one thing I'm surprised about on this server. No devil swarm mafia, so to speak. I'm walking around on Goro, bro. There's devil swords left, right, and center all over the place. Like, I, yeah. I maybe the people already <laughs> got all the skins they needed to, you know, carve out their own little robber baron fortune. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't have skinning and I don't have a devil source set, and I'm broke. And it's kind of frustrating oh. seeing these devil swords walk all around me, and I have a. Uh, He's gonna no take ability a while. To do anything. Like the biggest challenge, challenge to create a Devil Sword Mafia, which it happened in Nost, and as far as I know, in North Dale it didn't happen. I don't know if it happened earlier and I wasn't playing at the time or something. The biggest challenge is to communicate between like the Chinese time zone people and like the Western time zone people. Like, because like in Nostalrius there was like a huge alliance of like Chinese players and like every other country running the Mafia. Here it doesn't seem to be that way and like, if you have like control over Ungoro for like 20 hours a day, but those four hours are controlled by somebody else that isn't playing to your rules, the mafia is not gonna make any sense because like the market is gonna be flooded. So I yeah. think that's what's going on. I'm just really excited, guys, to play Vanilla Man. It is so fun. Yeah. I love this game. It's for some reason my wires got crossed when I was a kid. I don't know. It doesn't get old to me. It's just so fun every fucking time. Uh, so much to do. You know, so much to do out in the world. So much yeah. to do, so much to see. Yeah. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's the people. For me, it's the people. It's, that's the main appeal for me. Like the social experience of it. I've never been good at video games, and I am not gonna about to start it anytime soon. But like being able to hang out with uh, over a common goal. You know, like some people like fishing, and I envy them a lot. Like you know, like. Uh, I only see, I, I don't care that much about fishing, but I totally get it, you know, like it's an excuse to hang out with the boys and get some beers. And like, True. that's wow for fishing me. Fishing is amazing. That is wow so for sorry. me. I always loved it. And, and I love your guys' vibe on it because you guys are kind of like happily casual in a lot of respects. Like, and I kind of admire, like, you really are just like based and just enjoying the game at your own pace. You're not really stressing about it. You're not stressing about really anything. You're just taking it easy, taking your time uh you know relishing in the moment and i'm just appreciative that you know there's still people willing to play vanilla in 2022 you know how many more freshes are there left boys before vanilla goes that's into dormancy question. for a long time that's, we got a, two. that's a great question yeah. yeah man it's a big concern you know like like for example look at the damage that tvc classic did to tvc servers and like they are not gonna do tvc anymore apparently so they haven't even announced their intention to do that and they like took it down you cannot even download the client from them anymore for tvc mm. so like i think if blizzard could license out you know how G what gta does with rockstar where you can run your own server like no pixel and uh, no pixel is huge now and it's a big rp community and you have to apply and it's very selective and there's a few other ones like no pixel like offshoots oh, It'd be yeah. so cool if blizzard could license out uh you know wow servers in the same way i don't think it'll ever happen but if they did and this was legit and you could actually put some proper marketing and branding and community and 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 and, and you know it didn't feel like you're yeah you know, if you could do it that way man i'm telling you we could make it huge bro we could make it now, absolutely why, huge why do you think it hasn't been done like that because i feel like that that that's a win-win for blizzard you know i think it's just two small potatoes for them if i had to guess they're dealing with just like many more integers with their like decision making wow it's just like a you know footnote yeah. in the in the cog in the machine like uh, but example, one day i do think they'll get bored of wow they'll think wow classic is no longer lucrative and they probably won't care too much about 
you know, they, they won't care too much. And then hopefully, like, they're just cool with private servers existing and... Yeah, like, okay, for example, know. here's one of the big problems that it happened with Bethesda. You remember that they used to, like, sell mods and they don't do it anymore. Like, ima imagine you rent out the license to somebody to run a server, right? And that guy starts doing illegal stuff like selling gold or doxing people or whatever. Who do you think they are going to sue? Are they going to sue the penniless Russian guy that is hosting the server or Blizzard? Like, that, I think that's one of the main concerns that they got with that stuff, you know? Mm. Like, it has what to be, like, a lot of liability is, problems. Um, yeah, for sure. What they could do is, I thought about this as well. I mean, it's still a sm too small of a potato, I guess. Um, but they could sell actually the clients, for example, a vanilla client, the TBC client, the um, Wrath mm. of the Lichkin client, could go with that. And then leave just uh, the private servers alone. I don't know <laughs> if that is feasible. I guess not. But yeah. that would also be a way to go i don't think i would ever pay, pay a sub again that's the problem no, right? uh, yeah i mean ash I'm once called it that um with their client they uh, at some point sold it you can uh, buy this and then you can uh, play on private servers because like you that's gotta understand idea. that the the insane feat of engineering that is the Nostalrius core and like why we can have like a 10,000 people server without crashing when Blizzard struggles to have 300 people fighting is that it's based on a 1.12 client and if you take the 1.14 client without doing some heavy modifications kind of like the opposite of what you guys are doing to play with 1.14 on this server you know like you would need like a packet translator and stuff because like the 1.14 client is not designed to run classic the 1.14 client was designed to run a lot of tiny instances together. That's what Legion and whatever was about. So they, it would take a, like, to have something similar to Nostalrius in the 1.14 client would take a major, major, major re-engineering effort. And, and, I, and I hope they can do that. I hope they can actually start working on 1.14. I feel that that was another point I was hoping to get out a little bit. I think yeah. um, <laughs> people have, the word's been getting out. Vincent put out a good video the other day. 1.14. I think is a pretty big game changer. There's a lot of people who've been playing on this 112 client for close to 10 years now. Uh, and I love it. I actually have a lot of love for it. I've played on that 112 client, made so many videos using that little Mangos repack. I've been on flights to, you know, international flights where I'm on a plane and I'm bored and I'll just run it locally on my laptop and be able to level a Paladin 1 to 10 or something. Or, you know, <laughs> I, I, I love it. And in my mind, he was really Brutalnia. If you look at the README and you, or he was played a major role in it, right? He was this like yeah. Bulgarian developer who worked on that light soap repack. And just a ton of the, a ton of the reason why we're able to play these servers is due to Brutalnia's efforts. And recently he stitched together three projects. He used the Arctium sandbox. Uh, and then he stitched together this project that was converting like classic packets into 112 packets or something. I don't even know what a packet is, but. The packet yeah, is and the then... information that goes from your computer to the server. So like 1.14 communicates differently, like it, it's like it speaks a different language to the server than the 1.12 client. So you have to modify right, right, that. Right. So... Well, he, so he combined that with RTM with his own program that he made Hermes Proxy. And uh, it's just a, it's like a love letter to the community. I don't think the student makes money doing this. I think he just is a big vanilla enjoyer. and. Uh... He did the impossible, and now people are starting to enjoy 114. And it's very buggy. There's a lot of issues, but you know, people are putting in issues on the GitHub, and they're working on them, fixing them up, and chipping away at it. And a lot of people don't play these servers because of the scuffed 112 client. Only a handful of add-ons working, and it looks really rough. You know, no auto loot. You can't run sound in the background. You're just missing a lot there. And 114, 114 is like a new industry standard potentially. Um, with these servers so yeah it's also like some older computers cannot run it like i got a friend from pakistan that wants to play here and he can't because his mac will not run 32 bit software anymore so like mm. yeah i heard this a lot a lot of these people man even though they played classic they when you see the reaction when they are able to play like on everlook with 114 it's like they're a kid on christmas morning like no joke like they're so happy they're like <laughs> giddy they like can't even believe it's true they like, you know, putting in their weak auras and using any add-on they want out of the box of Curse Forge. It's just unbelievable. That's so cute. 
I had the same reaction <laughs> when uh, Carter how does showed he... me all the links there. Like, I got uh, a few questions because I do not use it. Like, how does it interact with, like, combat logs and stuff? Because, like, the vanilla... You can log, brother. In forms you can log, brother. What? You can log, brother, on the on that 112 client. Oh, there's no, no shot, mean, there's like, no advance. I mean, like, yeah, I heard that. That's actually pretty cool. But I mean, like, how does it work with, like... For example, heal prediction, because like as far as I know, the the API of Vanilla doesn't communicate with add-ons properly, so you cannot have like accurate heal prediction. It's more or less guesswork by the add-on. Like something does it work properly? Like that stuff? That I'm not sure. I haven't played a healer on here, like using any of those add-ons, but all I know, bro, I'm a big guy for like immersion and art, and I, I that's a huge like fun thing I like to do is try to make this old game that we love look as as stunning as possible and i think you can do a lot with it like a, you know doing reshade messing with the graphic setting always preserve that like now that the 114 client is something that people can run servers on and stuff like that like we'll always have vanilla in our back pocket you know in kind of like one of its best best forms yeah so like we like got the keys to the lambo bro they put some really high quality textures in vanilla like for the time so like they probably predicted this thing was going to run for decades so like they put extra effort in making sure that the raw assets that they use were very high quality so you could like in the future crank them up to 11 like i've seen the screenshots it's pretty impressive it's really really nice man i mean I, the one thing that always tilted me about vanilla as much as i love the game to death is the lava like the stock lava oh. if you've ever looked at it the it's, texture it's is a square it's a tile it's unironically two pixels like i really think yes. they put like their intern they put their like intern you know <laughs> Like that, that's on that. What, and also like the dirt in the barrens, the dirt in the barrens is also the same problem. It's like a tiny square and it repeats like a tile. So you can like, if you zoom out, you can tell like it's such a terrible job with the texture of that. Yeah. But you're now able to play P server with weak auras, full add on support, start attack macros, cancel form macros baked in, auto loot, sound running in the background, uh, ray tracing shadows. If you have a good, you know, computer running it in 4k, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. It's just a, it's like going from the Stone Age to, you know, modern times, really. Now, so. as a uh, as a noob myself, now now I know vanilla is predicated on like the one point one two client. Now, are there any major changes? Do you think I, I transfer over to the one point one four client could really change the vanilla experience overall? Do you think that's going to? Do you do you really think that a lot of people like me myself? Okay, I'm 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 a casual shitter myself. I like um I like the add-ons, I like accessibility and stuff like that. But for the more hardcore players who are looking for a more uh, steadfast vanilla experience, do you think the 1.14 client is going to interfere with that at all? Or do you think the 1.14 will be able to hold um expectations for 1.12 and just improve upon? It's just going to improve upon it, man. It's ushering in a whole new generation. It's in its infancy. It's in its early infancy. There are many, many issues with 1.14 right now. Up until mm -hmm. like yesterday, I couldn't res on 1.14. You cannot resurrect. You need macro. So you just died? Yes, you need, you need a <laughs> really? script. The, the pop-up that says retrieve corpse or whatever, it doesn't pop up. So you had to run a script like forward slash retrieve corpse with like in some brackets or something in order to spawn. Yep. That's how early infancy we are. The the boat to Gromgal didn't work. The Zeppelin, you just like wow. crashed instantly. Any mob in the water would just have this animation of falling through the water, even though they were standing there. It looked like they were just constantly falling over and over again. It's in its early, early infancy. It's like this jerry-rigged client that barely works, but they are chipping away at the iceberg. They are improving it. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't be surprised yeah. in a year and a year from now, it's running smooth. Um, but I think for a lot of PVPers, like people who enjoy like Gulch, like the Gulchers are just built diff, bro. The vanilla Gulchers, the Druids, like the flag carriers, the all those guys, perplexity, um, the hen house lords they're just they just love the gulch it's their favorite thing ever and now they're gonna be able to play you know with weak auras and you know diminishing return trackers and everything every modern amenity and be able to play you know the game they love and with all that with all that stuff as well and i think it's just going to improve the experience increase the overall quality of life and perception yeah just uh, overall quality of life for everybody man I could it's use a, a less buggy D B DBM, you know, like DBM in the 1.12 is super buggy. It never tracks things properly. Yeah, but shout out to Britannia. He's done a ton for the community over the years. He's been in the game for like 10 years, working on different projects and- uh... Yeah, shout out. He's got some cool vids. Hell yeah, dude. And this is about two weeks old, this tech. He posted it on like the, the 2nd of November, so.
Yeah, there's so many unsung heroes of the private server community. I made like a, a new uh, uh, coverage of like when le legacy players shut down. Do you remember that site? Yeah, man. Like Been that guy, bottom, right? That guy made like a, a full armory and log website. Like, you know, insane amounts of work and he didn't make a dime. It's so sad to see it shut down. They say and they are going to take it back now. Yeah, the thing yeah. is though, I think with with 1.14 you're able to um, you're able to live log again because you can just go in there and enable advanced combat logging, run your Warcraft logs client, and that 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 should be captured in some capacity. I don't know if it's going to spit it out as an arrow log or a SOM log or what, um, but there's that. And then the other thing is LFG bulletin board. So LFG bulletin board is an add-on that was popularized in both TBC and in Wrath now, and it helps people find groups a lot easier. It takes a lot of the you know the spam out of. Uh, these, these public channels oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. you can run yeah you can run that right now in vanilla right now right you put lfg bulletin board not many people use it because it's only 114 enjoyers but it's kind of like the secret <laughs> tech right now yeah oh, because cool. like wall break broke my secret trick for finding groups which was that whispering slash who people <laughs> he, he ruined it for me i cannot convince him to change it back i'm gonna have to code a bot to spam more effectively or something like I always was like, why do you need LFD? It's so stupid. You just slash who warrior and whisper 20 warriors and what is going to say? Yes, I cannot do that anymore now. Sucks. What the hell, Wall? <laughs> Wall does uh, God's work on the server, man. Why do I yeah, gotta really pay is. the consequences for two bots? <laughs> he grinds away he, he, every day, damn. He does, yeah, man. He's, do he's really doing really a lot of crazy stuff and I... It's just so nice to see, like you guys were saying, like how how much vanilla is a labor of love. I can't think of any other game, actually, now that I think about it, that has this kind of a this kind of a community that's looking <laughs> that looks that works so hard and looks to the future of a game that's already past its heyday. It's just oh. it's it's phenomenal. It's fucking it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh. And like me myself, I'm my apologies. Um, me myself, like I, I'm uh, I'm a shitter. I, uh, I've never reached max level in vanilla, TBC, uh, Wrath of the Lich King. My only time ever reaching max was in Cataclysm. And I always heard, you know, I, pl I played vanilla WoW when I was a lot younger, but I never really got past, I believe, level 25 as a hunter. And it's crazy to me that I would rather play this game than so many other games that are newer. And this one's just so old and it's, it seems so, you know, from, uh, from the outside, an outside perspective looking in, it seems so worn out. But coming back to servers like this, it's just, it blo it really does blow me away. Like you, Cargos, like your guide videos and stuff like that. There was a lot of, there's so many people who are so passionate about the project itself. It's 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 really beautiful. I can't think of any other game that could even compare. That makes me so happy, brother. Because I think you guys are a little bit younger, like all of you, right? Like you're, you know, I got a few years on you. I'm, I'm 30 at the moment, and like I'm 30 and, as well. Yeah, boomer mode. Oh, nice, nice. I mean, but, but I mean, I, I just love oldest? it. Yeah, what the fuck? Oh, you're older. I mean, either way, man. I, I love. <laughs> Am I getting I love groomed? People. Who, I, love, <laughs> I love that there's like people who are new to the game that are still falling in love with it, and and it's still able to have that impact on people. You know, it's the game of a generation. It's a game of it our is. generation, and. uh <laughs> It means a lot to me, and I want to be like an ardent defender of vanilla moving forward, right? People talk a lot of shit about vanilla, and I, honest to God, I'll snort the copium all day. I believe vanilla is the best version of the game. There's the most to do in the game. It's the world of Warcraft mm -hmm. where the world is the main player. Is the, the world is is on the center stage as opposed to you know the player. And you can talk on and on about it, but I really do feel like it ages like a fine wine. And the thing is, I, I made this analogy in our text chat the other day. In order to appreciate a fine wine, if you're new to drinking wine, you need like a good sommelier or someone to kind of like teach you how to appreciate. Like a lot of people don't know what to do there, what, what there is to mm -hmm. do in vanilla. They don't understand all the emergent gameplay that can come as a result of the world buffs, the consumes, the rating, the ranking. Uh, and all there is to do in the game, you know, and there's just an absolute ton there, man, compared to Wrath and, and, and TBC, you know, those those are those are very fun games as well. But being able to, you know, teach people and kind of like show people like how awesome this game is and to keep the torch burning and like get new people, new, you know, interested in this. Um, you know, that kind of means a lot to me as, as cringe as that might be to some, right? You know, getting people excited to play such an old game, but there's a lot there, man. There's a lot to love. It's so replayable. 
Yeah, yeah especially really for like a player like of your style, like an explorer, like a like a theory crafter, like. Uh, the, this game has uh, vanilla, even TBC led to a lesser extent, but vanilla is like by far the most with the most obscure trickery and uh, things that you can do to get ahead. Like, I can tell that you really like that, that kind of stuff of the game, like just the tiny stuff that makes you a little bit better. Like, to this day, to this day, three years later, like your class guys have the best, the best information out there. Like, your PowerPoints. They they have they are the most complete guys. Not even paid guys can compete with that information that you put out back in the day, man. Like it was insane. I appreciate, I appreciate it, bro. But the thing is, I look back at those guides and I cringe a lot too. I sure I'm sure you do with your past videos as well because you learn so much. Yeah, you, you you change so much your mentality and like you learn so much over time that a lot of that stuff in my own mind feels so ancient and outdated. But I'm still learning stuff about the game every day, bro. I'm playing a new class. I'm playing Rogue for the first time ever in vanilla as a main. I've played with Rogues. Like I, I got Gladiator in TBC. My partner was a Rogue in twos, and like you know, I played alongside them. But it's totally different to to play it yourself. And that is so much fun, like learning how to play a new class. Uh, and you, you just you just learn a lot, man. I'm just always a student of the game. And I would say until people have played like all the classes in vanilla, you know, and and done it themselves, like you haven't really beaten the game. You know, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, like uh, there's uh, so much like how you say emergent content that comes out well, from yeah, vanilla. Uh, speaking of emergent content, like one one very good example I'd like to bring up. Um, I, I got back into vanilla back in the Darrow Shire days, and I remember leveling a horde character, and I came across the across the uh, quest item really sticky glue, which oh, essentially yeah, yeah. is a, it's it's essentially a net, but it's consumable, and you only get five charges. Only each each character gets five charges just by doing that quest, and it really made me think because uh, I've been playing a lot of retail, a little bit of war main stuff like that. Cringe, I know, um, but. The emergent gameplay that comes from the items in vanilla, that in itself is a huge, huge, vastly different experience than uh, TBC or Wet Wrath of the Lich King. Because like I, like I said, I've never really maxed out a character, but I assume that there are characters out there who will hold on to these emergent quest items, these consumables that will in completely bro, change the meta bro, for the way they play the game. You're, you're so right. I mean, this is what I'm saying. This is why I think you have vanilla WoW and then every other version of the game is kind of like retail. And it's not, I don't say that in a degrading way. That's actually like probably what the majority of people enjoy and, and more power to them. I, mean, I can enjoy TBC and Wrath and all that, but it's like what you said in vanilla, the lowest level zones still interact with the highest level content in a way. That yes. sticky glue that you're talking about, that sticky glue you're talking about, Kowloon, what if I told you, you go into the final raid of the game, Max Ramos, you go to the final boss, the end boss that you started off on this journey to slay like two years prior, and you use that sticky glue item that you got in the first 30 minutes of your character to CC his ads and defeat the boss. That's what they were doing. That's what Progress was doing. That's what some of the, the top guilds do. Wow. They save those sticky glues. They save those They save those bags of marbles that they get from Marshall Dugan at Goldshire yeah. level six, yeah. and they use it to beat the final boss of the game. Like, the, do the, you remember the Light of Elune and the scandal that it was in, like, Atlantis, was it? Like, Muro, this is TBC even, like, this is a vanilla item that you get as level 30 in the Alliance that makes you immune to damage for, like, 10 seconds, was it? I don't uh, remember. Yes, it makes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, like, the, 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 the world first Muro in Atlantis TBC back in the day, was a kill that just took that item and went all the way to a level 70 super overtuned boss and like skipped an entire phase because they were all immune to damage. Yeah. So fired. Yeah, like Great items like that. The nifty yep. stopwatch, the school of impending doom. Like there's so many tiny items that you think this sucks and then you look at it at 60 and this thing is so strong. Yeah. And you still have a reason to go to these low level zones, even at max level. You're going to Westfall and you're farming dust devils to get magic dust for PvP or whatever, right? Like, where, yes. like, the, all the zones matter. There's a reason at any stage of the game to go to these zones and harvest materials from them. The low level consumes are just as powerful at end game, kind of, if that makes sense. And it, it's just great, man. It's a vibrant world. There's, there's so much to do. There's people that, that, they play vanilla because they love world bosses. World bosses is just everything to them. They love the excitement and thrill of contesting a boss. Uh, a certain dominance over the server, uh, scouting, and they get really, really sweaty with it. That's one full swath of people. Then there's straight up like rankers, rankers who are just living in Alterac Valley in the Gulch, and they're navigating their own, you know, ge their, their their geopolitics and 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 trying to, you know, 
balance out the brackets and all right you have that then you have the pve sweaters who love to speed run or parse and they're trying to get world buffs and set up a you know a new personal best with speed runs and that's one thing they like to do then you just have the you know the gold farmers or the buff sellers buffs in and of themselves is a whole there's a whole economy associated with buffs right you can sell dire mall tribute lockouts you can sell your your ani head drop or a zg zg drop like i don't know man there's just an absolute metric fuck ton to do in vanilla and it's all very fun like it's like the actual gameplay of it of farming stuff in vanilla i think it's just like very like very yeah fun i do. think like s fan pulled it best when he said like that it reminds him of when he was playing football like when you are about to go to the game you don't just drive to the stadium and go play football with your with your class you know like you prepare you 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 go to the lockers you like getting gear you get your coach like talking to you you know it's like a preparing for the game up, yeah i really like that feeling i think it got too annoying because of the culture not necessarily the mechanics but the culture of classic wow and like seeing not be sweaty here makes me so happy because like when you are not ma when it is not mandatory to get wall buffs they are great when it becomes mandatory to stay in a guild to get wall buffs everybody hates it I, I, that's the way i feel at least there's plenty of guilds though that actually don't mandate it. Like they do definitely encourage it, but like it, there's it's it's kind of few guilds that mandatory yeah. say you need to get the entire suite of them. If you just show up with like Oni buff and tribute buffs, like and you're miss if you're missing a buff or two, like it's not the end of the world. Um there's plenty of stuff out there too, and you know you can pug your own ones too, if you'd like. Um No, but, but what I mean is that in classic every guild almost, like every decent guild expected you to get all the buffs. But like in Lights Hope, for example, it was like we were doing farm content, nobody had buffs, everything was fine, you know, nobody batted an eye. Like, of course for progression you need them, okay, like, I, I can understand that, but like, I think it, we place too much of a premium culturally into world buffs at the start of Classic and that I really bugged like, me out. I think, I, I feel like for, uh, I think that's just another part of the emergent gameplay. Uh, for example, yes. like, you know, you have these world buffs and stuff like that, but it, 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 to use retail as an example, instead of having world buff meta, you simply have uh, uh, 10 mans, 25 mans to adjust difficulty, stuff like that. There's nothing really like that in vanilla, which is really nice. So you can, you know, like if you want a maybe a harder, uh, a harder Ragnaros run. Maybe you don't, you know, maybe you're not going to require everybody to have their world buffs and stuff like that, which is just, it's, it's, it's huge. It's it, it, rather than mitigating it's, it's, it's it, what I guess what I'm trying to say is with vanilla emergent gameplay experiences, most of it is up to the player and the guilds to decide. Mm -hmm. However, like if you were in retail and you know, you didn't really want to, you know, stick around with a guild that was too sweaty, you know, you could just, you could just LFG lfg jump into some fucking random my take on it is i think buffs are an acquired taste it's something that can initially put a very bad taste in your mouth because people can be toxic about things and they can be condescending mm -hmm. and they can be elitist and they can make it it can just really be a bad time right but it's something that is very much in line with the spirit of vanilla buffs it's like world of buff and consumable crap this vanilla and you can be as strong if you were sweaty enough if you had enough gold you have limitless power and some people in classic did this they would pop flask of distilled wisdom over and over and over again they would cancel it and pop it again and they would be able to print print 1500 mana over and over again right and you can you can do that if you have the bankroll to support it you can get every you know spell power and melee you know attack power consumable in the game as a ret paladin and go full fucking bankai super saiyan and and, and you know you, you can you can absolutely absolutely sweat to the ends of the earth they can, you can pop uh, up yeah, you can pop Flask of Petrification. There's so many interesting items in the game. I really feel like it was just pure dumb luck that they made so many interesting items in vanilla and they ended up being so high impact. Like, just weird weird items like Flask of Petrification. Like, there's no shot they, they would envision 20 years later sweaty nerds would be used that to bypass mechanics and they repop their yeah, regular flask. And, like, yeah. Uh, it, it just, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I, I like that. I enjoy that a lot. And it's the same thing with kind of with buffs. Like, in Psalm, they didn't have world buffs, they didn't have Chrono Boon, right? And I still enjoyed the hell out of Psalm, it was really fun, but I feel like by not having world buffs involved in any capacity, you're cutting out a huge chunk of gameplay in WoW that, mm -hmm. kind of for no reason, like, it's nice to have that chunk there, it's just more to do, more to more to engage with. And uh, a lot of the, the raiders, the PvE types, 
that becomes a game within a game when they're raiding. They like a punish. If you play bad, you play too greedy on trash or something, and you get one tapped by a trash mob and you lose your buffs. It's almost like why people like the hardcore challenge in leveling. If you guys have heard of that, like the one life yes. thing. That there's, yeah. if you die, there's kind of a punishment for that, right? And it encourages you to play well and play clean, and it's more satisfying when you can finish the run, preserve all your buffs. Um, there's definitely like a bad side of it for sure. Like I'm not saying that there isn't, but. I no, but I think I, I like the Chrono Boon a lot. I thought it was a great compromise, and like it's it's a shame that the community doesn't see it that way in here because I thought I think it would be a great idea to put in the game in here, like preserving your buffs for later, so you don't have to worry about that shit like two minutes after uh, before the raid. Like, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Great. My, my guess is that Psalm Two, whenever that does come out, is going to have Chrono Boon. They're going to have world buffs and they're going to have Chrono Boon. And I've talked about this on the stream yesterday when I was I was doing a late night stream and I was I was asking the chat. I said, "What do we lose in vanilla with Chrono Boon? What do we lose? And what what you if you get to the essence of it, what you lose is you lose the world PvP associated with world buffs. And if you try to think about it, yes, there can be some absolutely exhilarating things and really fun emergent gameplay from the world PvP and world with, with regard to world buffs." But overall, there's also a lot of just like toxic shit yeah, that can yeah. go on with that too. When you spend yeah, multiple hours out. collecting world buffs and some just shitter is just dispelling you, um, that can feel just really, really bad. And I can I I can live personally as a huge vanilla enjoyer. I can live without the world buff, without the PvP associated with world buffs. You can still lose those world buffs, right? You go into the raid with your Chrono Boon, you pop everything. If you make a mistake and you die, you just lost your world buffs. So you're still getting. The, the the exhilarating feeling of pumping with full, full world buffs you still get the punish if you die all you're missing there is the world pvp aspect uh and you also still get to play your character right because that was a big issue people had with world buffs that uh, yeah, oh, that's, I don't the, wanna, I don't like, that's the one issue yeah like, and the chrono boon on some we had the chrono boon in some but the, the world buffs didn't work in the raids right but people would still have a chrono boon and it was nice. You would hover over somebody's chrono boon in some and look on it and you would see a full royal flush suite of world buffs on it and you know their their perspective was like, oh, if it comes for if a world boss, you know, if we're gonna go kill a world boss, I'll pop my Chrono Boon and get all my buffs. And it just felt, it just feels nice, like having this Chrono Boon with a full suite of buffs. You'll be ready. You just pop it and you just go fucking Bankai Super Saiyan whenever you want, like you know. And then you can re, you know, resave them again after. But yeah, because like that's what like uh, annoyed me so much. I had to make a, a second character in Classic just to preserve my buffs and I would play on the second character that I didn't want, really want to play with just because I couldn't play on my character because I had like now, if you played it, the buff the buff will run out like you it has a two hour window and if you like keep playing you lose it it's so annoying now what, yeah. what, do you think that was uh, Blizzard's intention was to uh, maybe uh, incentivize uh, doing like leveling an alt in that kind of situation I've, I've actually talked with Kevin Jordan and John Stats, and that's probably some of the most starstruck times I've ever been in my entire life, honestly, meeting some of these like developers that worked on the original game. My overall takeaway from talking with them, I, I love these guys to death, but they were basically just saying they were a bunch of really passionate nerds all working on like cool stuff independently. They had like a cool idea for something, and they just splinter off into little teams and go work on it and build it. They didn't have some grandiose vision of how all, all this stuff was going to like uh, interact with each other. All the different Isn't buffs and funny? items and stuff. Isn't that funny? Yeah, but it kind of it worked, right? It's almost like they stumbled worked, upon yeah. this genius. If they stumbled upon this genius, you you create a bunch of stuff that's really cool independently, and then you get these really flavorful interactions that you don't even anticipate. Like he said on the record, they did not expect people to get full world buffs and go kill all these bosses and stuff. This type of culture and atmosphere just formed over all these different playthroughs of vanilla, and it it's just lucky that it formed in this way. Like it's so fun, the whole system of it, like. If you can just drink that vanilla Kool-Aid, like kind of just try to understand, appreciate the fine wine that it is and understand like what there is to do, how it works. Okay, this is a world of buff, world of consumable craft, just how it is. You got to be really well stocked, have a good, you know, I, I, you know, you go out into the field from the city and you're trying to resupply. It's like you're on a fucking mission and you're going out into the field. You're checking your potion count. You're checking your band-aids. You're checking your, your, you know, um, what do they call it? All the things that each class needs, like whether it's poisons or vanishing powder for rogue or hunters, it's ammo shamans. It's what well, like onks and you know, whatever the fuck druids have like or maple nuts and stuff. Respect. Yeah. Self respect. But you know, <laughs> when you go that. out into the open world, it feels like you're, you're preparing for like a mission, man. You're making sure you're fully squared away. All your gear is packed up tight. You have band-aids, potions, everything. Cause it's dangerous out there. And it's hard to go gather these, 
you have to fight viciously to get Lotus or to get whatever you're trying to, you know, go for. Um, and just way, a lot of that, man, a lot of that feeling I've never been able to experience in other versions of the game. Like a lot of times in TBC, I'm sitting in chat. I'm getting summoned to wherever I need to go. I'm getting summoned to raid. I'm pressing the Q button on Arena and I'm playing Arena. And it's all fun, but it's very different from the vibe of vanilla. You're and how it's travel, so you world centric. Yeah. I'm in Angoro Crater right now, and I'm stealthing through the crater. It's pouring rain. I see gigantic devil sores walking around me. Alliance everywhere I go. Uh, it's just extremely dangerous and immersive and atmospheric. And uh... oh, the weather effects and the ambience, so much atmosphere. Yeah. The night feels yeah. really amazing. Yeah, I, it's it's so strange to me. Like I, I think it makes sense. It's simple as better being a boomer myself i played shadowlands through recently and i leveled up in that zone and i gotta tell you the like the high the high quality assets the high polygons the beautiful environments in shadowlands don't they don't even compare to to azeroth to vanilla azeroth it's it's kind of crazy completely different game they had yeah, a like yeah. a great artist direction. I don't remember the name of the guy that designed like a lot of the zones. They interviewed him. I don't know if you interviewed him too. Did you? Car Cargos? I forgot the name. He made a book like the Warcraft journal. Yeah, yeah, I had him on. A, I had him on. A, it was on our yeah. Good Morning Azeroth podcast. Uh, he made all the caves and I, uh, I totally dungeons remember. and stuff. Yeah, like they had like such great talented people, and a lot of them were like guys that were just painting rocks before they joined the company and then they told them like go make this zone and yeah. it worked out somehow it's unbelievable man I, I talking to them i was so starstruck man i it's like i literally saw santa claus in real life when i fucking <laughs> met kevin jordan he, he he's the guy who's responsible for making all the classes and talents all these just these cherished classes and talents that are so ingrained into our minds like he was the key person driving all that and he, he views all the classes as his children he doesn't even play the game currently, but he still has a lot of love for it. And he doesn't like any class more than any other class. You know what I mean? And he was just giving his thought process on, on a lot of it and, and getting John Stat's take on, you know, he was telling us what was going through his mind when he designed Wailing Caverns. And I still remember, he has a lot of this stuff in his books, but he was saying, like, I wanted, like, an Easter egg way to kind of guide people in Wailing Caverns and show them where to go. So he, he put these mushrooms, these yellow mushrooms. Next time you're in Wailing Caverns, look for him. Anytime you're confused or lost in where to go and and Wailing Caverns, look for the nearest yellow mushroom and just keep following the trail of mushrooms and it'll lead you to the next bosses. You know what I mean? And he was telling, and it's in his, in his book too, like when he designed the dungeon Black Fathom Deeps, um, you know, what was going through his mind in terms of designing that like hopscotch, you know, you have to jump from each, you know, each like stone to each stone and what, what he wanted to like invoke in the player as they're doing that. And Yeah, I remember that interview. He said something like he didn't know if it was going to be possible to jump over it yet when he designed that. Because yeah. like it was so early in development that he didn't know what the game was going to be played like yet. That was so funny. Like, you know, you see this game and you think like, oh, it is so obvious they could do this and that. And like they didn't know if it was going to be a third person game or a first person game or something like that when they started. Yeah, man, Oof. and that's another thing I've observed, right? I, I, I feel like some of you were there too, right? I think you were there, San, and, and maybe Vincent too. Do you guys remember before? Okay, so I, I started playing vanilla private servers again right when Warlords of Draenor was out and Nost was out. I missed the launch of it, but like I was, you know, I was probably midway through the server and I started watching videos and stuff and, and joined up. Uh, and I think I played a little bit of Kronos before, like possibly, but this was a this was a time where the world chat at the time, San, San, people were the constant conversation in world chat. If it wasn't about Alex Sensual, it was about um, Steel. You, know, you think do you think Blizzard is going to do vanilla, guys? Do you think Blizzard will do it? And people are like, Nah, man, you are literally tripping. There's no way Blizzard does vanilla. Like. There's no that was the conversation, bro. It wasn't even a possibility. These people were playing vanilla WoW in 2016 with no possibility of vanilla actually coming out. There was no glimmer of hope. They had made no breadcrumb announcement, nothing. People were just playing this game, you know, with the with just a just a fervor. You know what I mean? I was watching some of those early videos by like you know, Hamster and Mr. GM and Dodgy. I went over this a lot before, and it was inspiring, bro. It was it was like 
intoxicating. You just wanted to participate in this fledgling kind of underground community. Like it was just, it was awesome. It was like underdog feel vibes. And I, and I feel like you guys are doing that in many ways now with like a new generation of people to enjoy vanilla. But, you know, then when Classic got announced at BlizzCon 2017, it was electric, bro. Like the whole, every, like dude, millions of people across the world got so excited. I remember that. Yeah. I like you know, cookies it, and cream, but some of you like vanilla. <laughs> It was yeah. so exciting, man. It felt like a movement. It felt like, yo, we are classic gamers. We are vanilla gamers. We like the way the games used to be. We're built diff. Like, we don't really like the retail style. We we had a lot of pride going towards classic, man. And the classic players, it really felt like the private server community and a lot of the figureheads at the time were at the forefront of it. And even people like Alex at the time, right? These people were like vanilla yeah. figureheads. And it was inspiring. And it, you know, and classic came out and it was a hell of a good time. I made a ton of friends and a ton of great memories um and i absolutely just adored that time and cherished the you know the pre-classic hype but i look at it right now with tbc and wrath and that community from back then is unrecognizable like i don't see it anymore i don't see the same people that are long gone already um and it's not to say the community is bad it's just it it feels like more of a retail audience that, yeah, are, that are playing you know, classic like, currently I, yes. I think you know Super ironic. I think Alex Sensual made a great point when he said that most of the people playing classic today they just play retail and that's their alts. That's their alts. That's what it feels like, man. That's what it feels like. And and the th 100%. here's the other thing that uh that it makes me a bit frustrated at times because Same. in the guilds that I'm in and the people I know, people do look down upon classic. They see it as like this Papega boomer game, like raiding and myth <laughs> mythic raiding is way harder. Like raiding it is you know, doing doing anything in retail is way harder. And that may be true in some respects, but it's also not a hundred percent bulletproof statement. It's you know, I think classic worthless. classic has legs to stand on. There is a lot of skill you can demonstrate in this game. There's a ton of finesse. There's a ton of really cool interactions. There's a lot to do. It's a respectable game with it with the, you know, it's an awesome game. And I don't think it's any necessarily better or worse. But all I'm saying is I do want to be like an ardent defender of vanilla and to and to make the case that there's more to do in vanilla now than there is to do in dragonflight or maybe yes. I, I don't understand dragonflight but like i said i could sit here for the next hour and tell you about all the different things you can do in vanilla to like you know enjoy and have a good time everything from the and and the systems too like the simplistic charming friends list that you have where it's no battle net you know i'm not seeing who's playing fucking call of duty Warzone on yeah. my friends list it's just a few simple concise list of players that it, it reminds me of the halo 2 friends list if anybody played halo 2 back in the day it was yes. just charming simple uh system that was so um before it's so the, fun to use. You know? Before the software companies tried to spy on everything you did, you just had a friend, and that was it. You know, it was the game and nothing <laughs> else. You didn't need a launcher. You didn't need like to install this fucking thing that you don't need. You needed this Steam Epic Origin launcher to play anything. You just play the game. You had your friends in there, and that was it. Yeah. But like, this that... is perception that classic is is a joke and rating in classic is like you know there's no mechanics omega law imagine wiping just like you know the reason i like classic like this is a very popular thing the reason i like classic is the content is just so brain dead easy that you can be like kind of in a vegetative state and still clear it all with your friends and yeah. stuff and just relax and it's just this like completely like joke of a game but it's very relaxing and stuff and I kind of get a little bit of what they're saying because I hear about Mythic and I hear that like, you know, you put two, three hundred wipes in on a boss, so you're just chain wiping and you got to be built there for it. You have to like take the take the wipes with a smile and you get back up and you chip away, you progress on the boss a few percent at a time. I get it. But that doesn't mean that there's no skill or finesse or stuff or legs in vanilla as well. It's just a different atmosphere. I think right? the main challenge in success in vanilla is the, the main thing that will determine your success in vanilla is not the game is your social skills like how can you yes. rally 40 people into doing something like like back in like classic i was in a very good guild and i was like doing very well and i was a terrible player and the only reason i was in a high ranking role and i was doing like, in that guild was because i was capable of stealing people from other guilds that was my job they didn't care if i showed up to the raid that was the the one thing they had me for and i did it and like you know like is quote unquote the easy social aspect yes it is quote unquote easy to kill ragnaros what is really hard is to get 40 people that are gonna try and they are they are gonna show up to ragnaros that's the hard yeah, but i mean there's other angles of it though right there's speed and there's efficiency it's not just killing the robot it's either how fast you can do it how efficient you can do it if you can do it in an interesting way and the other thing that classic has over retail 
is the idea of fresh, brother. Fresh. I don't think there's even a perception of fresh in retail. They don't go again. There's no fresh. There's no cyclical nature of retail. It's Can't just these servers. BFA. It's these servers that just exist in perpetuity, and they just there's not really any difference between the servers now. You can kind of just play with whoever. There's it doesn't there's not really fresh servers or rolling restarts. Classic, we have fresh. It is a cycle. It is a circle of life. Kumbaya, fucking, you play a different class the next time. We're not scared of it. We're built diff, bro. Give me 0.5x leveling speed. It's fine. You know, nose to the grindstone. We'll, we'll fucking bust it out. Like, and you go again. You play a different class. You do it a little bit better. And I've been playing this game for so long. I don't think I'm skill capped by any means. I still think I have a lot of room to improve as a player overall to understand the classes. There's some, my, my whole point is there's a lot there. Vanilla in particular has very strong legs to stand on there's a ton of gameplay there's a ton ton of demonstrable skill um, oh oh man i'm so sorry like i i i had to change the setting of the stream i had chat disabled for like this whole time i thought like people were just really paying attention right now i am so sorry boys you're welcome back to chat sorry you go on <laughs> oh yeah oh good but um <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know i just there's just a lot yes. there with vanilla and I'll, I'll be there every step of the way with you guys for the few that are left the few the proud the vanilla 112 enjoyers i'll be there with you guys every <laughs> fresh you know what i mean like this game is fucking goaded it's the game of the generation there's a ton to do and and wow in general is in a great spot right now there's a lot of hyper dragon flight you know people are gonna play their little scaly dvnr evokers and, and all that shit. you know more power to them godspeed uh wrath is fun but vanilla is also fun man i'm hyper som too everlook is badass um I'm talking a lot, boys, and uh, I just I just got a lot. <laughs> we can tell, boy. That's why we brought you yeah, in yeah. here. You know, oh, like, yeah, yeah. man, my good. <laughs> that that is like your your like your amazing skill set. Like your the research that you put into your guides. Like because like you you know what I'm talking about when when classic was coming out. Like so many people were trying to BS their way into making a guide that they never played before, and like you were you went in with like this fucking document document this bible of like the class and like every single detail on it like the weapon you gotta get the quest you gotta do the uh, the abilities you gotta do like for somebody like me that likes nerding out all this stuff like you you are the best that i, I still remember the uh, portion of the druid guide with the front stabbing i do that because of you <laughs> I, I mean, I appreciate it, guys. I really do. Like, it's crazy <laughs> to think those stupid guys I made, like, so many years ago are still, like, you know, people remember that stuff. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I never felt, uh, you know, a passion to promote a game in, in, in the same way as Vanilla. I mean, dude, the music is so goaded in my, as far as I'm concerned, it's like the ballad of our childhood, man. Like, all these zones, like, it hits the same each time, bro, as you're flying through it. Like, there can be times where you get sick of WoW and you take a few months or a few years off, but... You know, then you come back and you are uh, addicted again. <laughs> it's just so comfy, bro. It's so fun. The combat is so buttery smooth and classic, even though I'm playing on a buck fifty ping right now. It's so satisfying. The leeway, just the way everything feels, the noise, the animation, the classes, the, the, the flavor, it's all there in vanilla, man. It's it feels impactful. Yeah. I miss yeah, the vanilla on a like animations. This too. Those are the best. What's your favorite race of animations? Or like animations wise, what do you think is the coolest race to play? Melee. Oh, hand down. Hand, hand, melee? No, no, no races for melee. Troll mage. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, best animations on melee in a vacuum. I'm actually gonna go troll male, dude. Ooh. Just on animations. They look like... they're doing like fucking Eddie Gordo Capuera as they're as they're as they're fighting, bro. Yeah, I like the orc one because when you're slamming, I don't know if you paid attention to that animation. He just stands there and he tries to get mad. He just, like shakes in place for a little bit and then he slams. And I, I always thought it was hilarious to play a, a warrior with orcs animations. What I find so interesting <laughs> too, though, is also like how people have their tastes have evolved over time. Like there, there used to be like female dwarfs used to probably be the lowest representation out of anything in the game. <laughs> By and far. now there are female dwarfs everywhere. everywhere. They are the most there common are... priest, I think. They, they are female taurins everywhere like it, it, it's yeah. like it is it's crazy how that, that's one angle of it and the, the other point i was going to make too is i can't believe how strong this world is this world that was made in probably 2003 because like the game came out in 2004 yeah. but they had to actually put all the pieces together in 2003 
we have min maxed this game and put it through the meat grinder of technology and, and we've hit it with so many external forces from every angle we literally have gm commands on our own private servers trying to like no clip out of the walls and map like we have every tool at our disposal to try to rip this game to shreds and somehow it still holds strong it's still fun as fuck and you can make little tiny tweaks to either itemization or phasing or whatever like they did in som and the game hits entirely different the meta gets shifted it's it's crazy dude like som was such a breath of fresh air for me i played so many like 112 servers over the years that for me, SOM was interesting because they made it unlimited debuff slots, which shifted the meta a lot. Hunters are able to Serpent Sting and use Hunter's Mark. Warlocks are able to do full dot rows on stuff. Uh, they put 0 0.5 in from the start, which is the Dungeon Set 2, which during Classic came out during AQ. So that means you have like Dark Mantle set and that like Heroism set for Warriors. And, you know, you make a few changes like that and the game feels entirely different. Rogues are pumping now. Warlocks are pumping now. Hunters are pumping now. Um... It, it, but you're you see what i'm saying you're not actually adding new content to the game you're just you're just kind of tweaking the timings of, yeah, but of items out, yeah. and phasing you know what i mean and now with this server too we're playing on 1.2 uh and just on the unique set of circumstances we have here this is going to be its own unique meta as well uh and i don't i don't know what it's going to be yet th th to be honest and i'm excited to see how it goes i think like for one i think that verb drunks are going to be even stronger now because like all the good tanking gear is not out there like a lot of them like the trade gear like, that would be interesting to see. Seen a lot more bear boys. I got a soft spot for bear tanks, even though I don't play a druid anymore. One thing, like, when, when we're talking about the meta and stuff like that and the gear shifting, that's why I like vanilla so much. I got, like I was saying earlier, I played through Shadowlands, and there was very little in that game with transmog and a lot of stuff that, like, that really made me feel like this is my gear, and this is how it's going to affect the way I play. There's almost none of that. However, in um, in vanilla, like I was recently playing, I got a uh, fire wand, I believe, and it uses it doesn't it uses a uh, fire bla like a like a fireball. So there are enemies who are immune to fire damage, which is a, I don't know for me going from you know Shadowlands where I could just smack everybody in the face with what pretty much any mob in the face pretty much with whatever I want and then coming back to classic uh, uh vanilla I mean it's 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 a totally it's a totally different damn world totally you know different. you know what is so funny impactful. you know what is funny like in Legion people got a uh, people got the Ashbringer and nobody gave a damn and in classic you get and in vanilla you get like an eight slot bag and you're jumping off your chair yes I'm I have uh I have Star Fury in uh in uh retail and I use I transmog. I spent like like maybe 50 hours of my life just constantly grinding that raid until I can get Thoriel Star Fury. And I transmog it onto my bows. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody yeah. gives a shit. People <laughs> like, oh wow, awesome. And I'm like, please, I tried I worked so hard for this. Please inspect me. <laughs> please. You seem like a really great guy, Calvin. I mean, all you guys, I really hope you guys make it the server and at least do one full playthrough through vanilla, like and kind of just get just imbr just fucking chug the Kool-Aid, boys. Like just right in the IV right into the veins. It is such a fun game. It is and this is like maybe one of the last opportunities you have to play it towards, you know, and enjoy like every stage of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. and you, you guys are like figureheads in the community. You've done a lot for promoting it. Like I think this is it, man. Like I I really hope you guys make it. Like I'm gonna try to make it myself, uh through all the phases, but you know, like, it, I just feel like there's this game is so awesome, and people are losing, they're, like, not remembering why it's awesome, you know what I mean, at this stage, yeah. and that's kind of, like, why yeah. I even want to do podcasts and stuff, to try to, like, like remind people what's so dope about Vanilla, because you can kind of forget, right? You can kind of just get swept up with, like, whatever yeah. you want, other games. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, like, no cap, sometimes we get on Discord, and we talk for two hours about this shit doing nothing else. Yeah. That, that's kind of our pastime. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. truly awesome. Okay, boys, like, um, we're running out of time a little, so, like, I don't know, before we, oh, free ch girls chat here, thank you so much for that comment. So, awesome. <laughs> anyway, uh, chat, if you got any question for, for our boy Cargos, we got a resident expert in Vanilla, that's not gonna last here, like, you know, like, this is maybe your one chance to, like, take, get your question about whatever class you got here. You know, you got any question, you drop it right now. Uh, we should address that. You know, got, got a bunch of people that couldn't chat before. That's my bad. I, I disabled chat the whole thing, dude. 
So oh, has long. it really been an hour and a half already? Like, I actually Almost. feel bad. I feel like I just Almost. talked straight for like an hour and a half. That's actually yeah. crazy. Dude, we brought you here for <laughs> yeah, a reason. This is that. awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, didn't even have to thank... do any work. I don't think I'd be playing this if it wasn't for your guys' videos and stuff, man. Because, like, I was I was pretty wrapped up in the Wrath side of things and doing a lot of other stuff. And I almost, like, for a while, thought Everlook was kind of doomed to a certain extent. Because it felt like a I lot thought of the, too, the actually. Hype... You know, I thought that too, yeah. you know, to be fair. Yeah, so I was excited for Sam always, right? But like, I didn't think I was gonna play ever. Like, I didn't have high expectations. Asmus was like really pushing, like, "Hey, man, let's do a level, like, you know, Undead Rogues and stuff." And and then watching your guys' videos, and um, I got just a little taste of that feeling I felt in 2016, bro. When I was watching Hamster and Dodgy and Orc Bit, yeah, and those guys just making these sicko guys just like, just oozing with passion about the game, like small underdog community. It didn't even think like we were gonna even get classic. It felt like a win, you know what I mean? Like it felt like we all won a fucking yeah. massive prize when yeah. classic got announced. Well, you know what I mean? I got a little taste of that watching your guys' videos and like getting the hype going again for Everlook. So like thank you for that. And that's good. Man, like really you know the thing that you say about like they are never gonna license Blizzard and all of that. Uh there's this Chinese saying that a spark can set a field of fire a single spark can set a field on fire, you know, like only nostalgia being taken down gave us classic. Don't give up hopes. You, you never know what's gonna be the next spark. You never know. Yeah. It may be the lawsuit. Yeah. It may be China. We never know with that company, dude. Well, I'll tell you what, bro. There's a lot of good signs. There's like the rumblings are, are happening, right? Like the population is yes. going up, dude. We're at 7k pop. There's more people yeah, playing Everlook today 7K. than there was on launch. There, I'll yeah. say that again. Yes. There's more pe people playing Everlook today than there was on launch. Yes. It, it, there are people that are streaming Everlook low key. There's the 114, which is this massive catalyst of like, holy shit, I don't have to play on an ancient like Neanderthal Stone Age client anymore. I can actually play with weak wars and stuff. Holy shit, like this is insane. <laughs> then you have, you know, p yeah, people are starting to stream it, come back to the game. There's a bunch of OGs that you know recognize, you know, in, in in the scene. We're in the phase one wrath, where that phase one blues is kind of setting in a little bit more. Like there's still a couple months towards Ulduar and Dragonflight's out, but you know, a couple weeks into Dragonflight, people kind of get bored of that. Maybe start starting starting to want to come. come come back. So yeah, oh yeah. Um, the yeah, dark some... side, <laughs> come. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> but it's a that's the other thing I was gonna say, boys. We are already. A small niche within a niche within a niche as 112 vanilla wow enjoyers. Like, I, I'm gonna keep it a buck. World chat is kind of crazy. A lot of times, you guys got some crazy takes going on. Like, oh, and, yeah. like trying to trying to like be very divisive and stuff and there's like obviously like some racism and stuff going like come together guys it's a global community it's a global server there's not many of us left out here enjoying vanilla in 2022 soon to be 2023 chances are you met any of these people whether there's chinese or russian or whatever at a bar and you found out that they played wow classic and they know about yes. hogger and elwin forest and shit <laughs> you'd buy them fucking three beers on the spot and a pizza and you'd literally kick it with them and like become fucking irl homies instantly okay. you know what i mean there's not many of us left out there, so you know, just be nice to people and like, don't like. I'm don't so just glad be that you're saying out all that. The time. Yeah, I'm glad you're saying this uh, because this is one of my uh, naive ideas. Um, I also did some other uh, cover, did some other uh, project, and I uh, want to say to people here: we have choices, and let's come together as a community. It is basically mm -hmm. us against others. Uh, if you against Blizzard, Bobby. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just come together as a community. Exactly, man. That's what's gonna draw people in, right? They're gonna get those vibes from the community, and they're gonna be like, "Man, like I, those people seem cool, man. I kind of want to like, you know, be friends with them or be for, you know, like." It's gonna draw them in, you know what I mean? If they get here and they make a, a character and they're looking for a dead minds group, and people are like, you know, getting crazy with like, you know racist yeah. remarks in the world chat yeah, and, and whatever they're talking about bro like politics yeah. or whatever they're not going to really feel that desire to want to like actually you know play the server they're not going to respect their fellow gamers on the server and shit like that you know what i mean and they're probably just going to like go back to whatever they were doing before so even with all of that stuff and like the toxicity like uh I, like for example like i was there for everlook launch and like as you know launches can be hectic they're awful people are making all spamming chat and stuff even then uh, it was still, it was still, you know, fairly easy to find a group, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a goddamn amazing experience. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. I hope you guys make it to the end, man. Like it's gonna be super fun. Like, oh, I definitely if you ever get, will. 
if you get ever like frustrated or you don't know what to do like um or like you're confused about something man like there's a there are some ogs out there that just love this game in the same way like i do like and they're happy to help bro and like kind of you know just help just help with whatever yeah, you know, like, I've been, like, maybe this is a little teaser. I've been wanting to get Hamster in this podcast for a while, but I know he has, like, a life now, and I feel bad, like, bothering him. Like, because I know he would say yes, but then, like, I am, a, a, like, he's busy. I know, I, I am going to uh, gather the chorus. I'm going to gather the chorus one day to, to do that. Dude, dude, I'll, I'll hit him up right now, bro. Hamster, Hamster and I go way oh, back, bro. we talk we all the time, yeah, but, like... yeah. Hamster was a chat, dude. He's, he's got some cool videos. One guy is telling, yeah, he's man. saying that you grieved him in Ashen Bale, Cargos. Can you apologize to that poor man? Apologize. Oh, I'm, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm very sorry, brother. I'm very from the bottom of my heart. Oh, by the <laughs> way, by the way, can, can we get a shout out to my girl, Penilen, who showed up in the chat, you know? Penilen? That's, that's another OG right there. Oh, he's my God. He's been around for a hot minute. He's been... Uh, all her... Do you, do you know that <laughs> it's, in it's the... Stuff like... in, in the top of donations of her stream, it still says Alexensual as one of the top donations. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's seen stuff like this, like this it, in itself is a good example for what Vanilla brings to the table. Like the social aspect of it. I was playing Daryl Shire, you know, just screwing around in the comfy crew, and I met Medina through that game. I don't think any other game, it, it, even like, uh, uh, maybe TBC. But even TBC, like you were saying, a lot of it's just porting to raids and stuff like that. Vanilla has such a strong social aspect to it that helps keep the game. Uh, it's it's fresh every single time you play it. Even even if the server is, you know, it, it half it, even if it's halfway through progression, it's still a fresh, cool experience every time you fucking play Vanilla. It's it's amazing. You're gonna meet new people. You're going to remember. Uh, I still remember getting stabbed by Sewer Hobo in Darrow Fire <laughs> like two years ago. I still, like, as He's far still as I'm here. concerned, I don't know who he is, okay? But screw him, okay? It's stuff like that. It's just the small, emergent, like, I will never forget that. I will never forget for that. Life. Yeah, I'm traumatized for life. I'm going to be on my deathbed and being like, when I was your age, I was playing on private servers and this prick Sewer Hobo kept owning me in Westfall. <laughs> yeah, the man. name it's... is program. <laughs> Remember, son, <laughs> always pound noobs. <laughs> Don't forget to Nova before you blink, my boy. <laughs> and I just, I, I remember, I know some of you are in the same boat too. Like, the, the gen, just remember that feeling in your belly. I'll never forget it. I, I went to go, I was getting Subway at the time. You know, the sandwich shop in America, you may not have that. Sandwich my brother in charge, oh, yeah, Christ, brother. you made the sub, yeah. the sandwich. So I'm getting subway, dude, and I'm I'm watching these Alex Sensual guides at the time, uh, and he 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 made that he was actually a big guide maker at the time, like, and he he yep. you know was making these oh, these like guides. he actually had a very calm voice, very soothing voice, just talking about like you know how to make gold in vanilla or like you know ten tips for this. It was very crude, like the production value, but I'm just getting my subway sandwich. I'm watching these videos, and I am just fucking head over heels, just bricked up dude i can't wait to get back and get into stone talent and pick some fucking amber corns bro like i just and this this is a long time ago right this is like you know 2016 2017 type of shit but i just that was such a uh it was so much fun man like just getting back into vanilla for the first like that first for any for any of you guys right like a lot of us probably took a ton of time away and then like that feeling of remembering this game is out there still and getting back into it um just the absolute it's the absolute best man. huge yeah yeah like that's what i like what i really enjoyed about alex coming back you know like those chill style of videos he's very good at doing that like in ironically i think that's why a lot of people watch kasumok now because like he tries to imitate that style and say what you will it is a pretty a pretty entertaining style you know like you know the, the whole dramatization of it how he walks into the chimney you know, like... Yeah, 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 it's, go <laughs> it's good, and it, it, I think it's indicative of the World of Warcraft game itself. Like, the kind of, like, the, uh, Cargos was saying, like, it's a niche within a niche within a niche community, but still, there are people within this community that are, like, they're prolific just by playing the game, and it's, it's huge. I can't think of any other game, like, I play DayZ casually, and I have been recently, and, you know, people will shoot me in the game, people will grief me, 
people harass me, but I don't know their names. I don't, I can't off the top of my head remember their screen names, but Sewer Hobo. I will remember yeah. that until I die. Yeah. Alliance are doing Onyxia right now. They already did Onyxia. I think even the Horde did Onyxia right now. Already. Oh, really? Yeah. You got to step it up, though, Horde. Uh, Alliance got a lot more 60s than us, man. We were kind of uh, I know. getting stomped out in the sweat department. Yeah, but Alliance you got to is... understand that this okay. whole new Chinese web of new players, we benefited a lot from that. So I think we're going to kick their ass. Yeah. Dude, I can't yeah, wait till most... you get the 60 sand, bro. We can actually run dungeons and stuff, bro. Like, Ubers oh, all day. I'm going to hit 52. I'm going to respect to resto, and I'm going to do nothing but farm dungeons uh, all the way to 60. I'm going to hit 60, go. and then I'm going to make sure you guys wipe on every raid and dungeon that we do together. Yeah, don't tell me your alliance too, Kowloon. Come on, no, bro. no, 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 I'm horde. Oh, let's get it, bro. What, what's your uh, class and uh, spec? I'm I am a troll frost mage. Let's go, dude. I'm Blue so bad class at the game. hype. Yeah. Okay, uh, like the way I see it, we all got a gang up and gang Vincent. Nah, Vincent's oh, got a yeah. re Vincent's got a reroll horde, bro. We'll make a little budget fairly. We're gonna so make him reroll sure. horde. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Level nine. <laughs> Already, uh, you level nine on horde? No yeah. shot. You have a horde? What is it? Um, tower and hunter. Oh Hunters man! Fun. You know the cool thing about tower and hunters, right? No. You know, you know they're the snipers. They're the, like the they're the Chris Kyle of Azeroth. They have they they have the the forty one. They they have the three extra like uh, yards of range, right? Ah. Uh, oh. Yeah, because their yeah. hitbox is bigger. Yeah, so they have like, you know, they can hit people from super, they can also be hit from the furthest away, but like you will be downrange, like 44 yards away or whatever as a, as a Tauren Hunter and you can hit people. Damn. That's cool. I did not know I that. love Tauren. I just wrote uh, because of that. They are the best. It's Tauren, Orc, and Dwarf. That's the top three. No, it's not. Come on. Dude. Trolls Holy are shit. weak and they are a disgrace to the Horde. Trolls have been in Azeroth for, have, well, okay. Trolls have been established in Azeroth for far longer than many of the other races. If they are and so the smart, orcs, if they are so smart, how come we decimated their empire like three times? Uh, they're not very smart. They're loyal there and they're respectable people. You don't. Oh, you know what? <laughs> You're on my list now too. Sewer Hobo and Samity. <laughs> now I have two. <laughs> I told oh, you. Like, I, I, I'll run you to guess your Wailing Caverns stuff, get you caught up. Like, I got some of my Wrath buddies playing too. They rolled here recently, and like, we did a Wailing Caverns for my buddy yesterday. At, uh, he's a level 17 hunter. He got like Venom Strike, full fang set. He got the, the bag, but a scope on his gun. And now he's just nice. having the time of his life. But once you get a little bit higher level, like going to, uh, you know. Yeah, he's gonna destroy Druids for sure. Yeah, level 25 on. Druids, watch out. Yeah. We we would refuse to let the meme die. We refuse to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Thank you so much, Cargos, to you for coming in and giving us giving us all this roundup of how it was back in the day to play vanilla during the classic days. Like it was so so hype. That's one of my fondest memories of classic, and like being able to relive that for a minute. It's been really, really good. Oh yeah, brother. Thank you for the opportunity. Much love. Shout out to everybody playing on Neverlook. All the 112 enjoyers out there. Much love, everybody. Same to you. Love you. Thanks for being here. Special thanks to Cargos for coming all the way here. Guys, he's 300 subs away from hitting 100k. Can you do me a solid and subscribe to him? Okay, I just want to make it happen. Do it for the Dina, please.